Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it and others up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. And yes, well... <laughs> Winter in Victoria does mean a fair amount of rain. In fact, a little later in this episode, uh, you may hear the thunderous sound of rain on the cabin top, uh, which is a phenomenon uh, they call an atmospheric river out here, was a lot of rain. Anyway, uh, this week we're going to stay here in Victoria and get a project done that I've been looking forward to a long time. You probably figured it out from the uh, title, but those glass cabinets are finally coming along. Let's dive in. Well, all right then. So, as I may have alluded to in the intro, well, that's a bit complicated because I haven't shot the intro yet. So now I have to remember to allude to it. Anyway, is this week I'm going to get on with putting some glass in these three cabinets that I built some time ago for the wheelhouse. And well, as you can see, I'm not using these cabinets terribly well because I have no shelves in them either. So, living aboard is very pleasant here, but I could use a little more managed storage, and I would really like to tidy these up. So. The neat thing about it is that these are going to be leaded glass. Now, think stained glass, but with no actual colored glass. So if I introduce you to this uh, little stained glass lamp I have here on my table, of course, it is sections of glass uh, that are connected together, in this case, with a technique called copper foil tape and then soldered. Anyway, we can talk more and more about the different techniques, but I'm gonna do something much, much simpler than this, but in this same style. Those of you who've been following along know I kind of like the mission or arts and crafts style, uh, which this very much uh, represents. Anyway, let's jump right in. So first off, as this table is the only work surface I have here, I need to enlarge it, and I came up with a kind of a rough system to do that. So uh, let me show you what I have in mind. Okay, the best way I could think of to enlarge this would be to temporarily add in an extra piece of plywood, uh, which will I will affix with a pair of new to me Irwin bar clamps, my favorite. And uh, the idea here is to have a semi disposable, and I shouldn't say too disposable, but in other words, somewhat marble surface that I can work on, and at the same time uh, have a little more room. Um, to get done this little project. I am a long way from all of my tools, uh, so this, this is gonna be nice, this is gonna be great, I like it. I can put the lamp back. Need light after all. Inspiration. Okay, so this is absolutely my first foray into any of this kind of glass work. Whether you want to call it stained glass or what I'm calling it is leaded glass. And as I said before, there will be no colored glass in the project I'm doing this week. However, it's also going to be done with um, uh, old style lead cane. And I can get into the differences a little bit. <coughs> this particular lamp is done with uh, copper foil, which is folded over the individual pieces of glass, and then the pieces are arranged together and all the copper foil edges are soldered together. And that was pioneered, I believe, by Tiffany for the Tiffany lamps that um, they made. And that's about all I've discovered from my brief research. Uh, that technique can be used to make all kinds of stained style, uh, windows, glass, etc. However, I'm just doing a fairly simple flat panel with fairly simple straight cut rectilinear cuts. And I really like the aesthetic of the lead cane and the soldered connections. And perhaps I'm able to show you a few clips. Anyway, very, very fortunate to have Victorian stained glass supply or something like that here in Victoria, uh, where I was able to go this morning and spend a few dollars on all the supplies necessary to do what I have in mind. Um, the fundamental parts are is a glass cutter, which is significantly more high tech than the last glass cutter I ever owned, uh, an oil that goes with it, uh, solder and flux to go with the soldering iron, great big one, um, to solder the connections. A couple of different sets of pliers. One is a special set of pliers. I forget, I think they're called gross ring pliers anyway. Anyway, they're nippers to break off little sections of glass and then 
the side cutters, but these are special side cutters apparently for cutting the lead cane itself. More on that in a minute. A rather nice little uh, square, which is handy because of the way it sits on the edge of the glass. That's going to work out really well. And I went to a hardware store separately and got myself another <laughs> cheap speed square and a marker and a large pad as well as these two clamps to make this all work out really well. All right, the two main things you're not seeing yet are the cane and the glass. Well, the glass is pretty straightforward. Two, two foot by two foot sheets of glass. I'm not gonna bring them up and show them to you. The cane is a bit more delicate and I'm gonna bring it to you now and explain it. All right, so the two types of lead cane I'm gonna do uh, use in this project are this um, basically deep, half inch deep, uh, what they call a wide H, and that has a channel on both sides, and this will be used uh, to frame the outside, and that'll allow me to put a quarter of an inch of it into a uh, reveal in the wood uh, panels. And as well, the next piece of cane is the basic cane you may be familiar with, which is much smaller, has the same uh, channel on both sides, but a sort of domed top and bottom, which is what separates the individual pieces of glass in the project. So I'm being a bit ginger with these because these are indeed made of lead and quite um, sensitive to being bent. Okay, here's the plan as it stands for now. Here is the port side window. And what I'm gonna do is trace that onto a piece of paper. So what I've done is I bought an art pad and I'm going to rip out a sheet. And uh, let's see if this works as well as I've imagined it. I checked the corner of this plywood and it is absolutely dead square. So simple. Now I'm tracing uh, to the principal opening of this window. I have yet to cut the rabbit in the backside to set the window in, but that's fine because as far as designing the window, this is the correct line. All right, so the design itself is very, very simple. And uh, I think instead of trying to uh, describe it to you, I will just draw it and you'll see it as it emerges. Uh, this spiffy glass cutter square. Here we go. Now that's very, very, very simple. And what I'm going to be doing, it needs to be scalable. So for this window, it sits in there like that. But for the larger window that's in the center, there'll actually be three of those center panels and getting the proportion exactly right so that the sides remain the same uh, was a bit tricky and I'm not sure I'm gonna sit on this for a little bit to see how I feel about that Of course the caning will make this larger <laughs> I think I'm gonna try a different balance, but I'll keep this one now, of course I would normally do all this work on uh, my computer. However, my computer that runs AutoCAD is aboard Jordi an hour and a half from here and I don't have a car Now, although that seems very nice, I'm just wondering if it's a bit too busy. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Or...
You know, I think that's the winner. It's the proportion between the main pieces and the side pieces. What about... Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's probably it. And well, it's tomorrow and after sleeping on it, I think I'm happy with this design, perhaps without these extra pieces in here. Um, I don't mind admitting this has been quite a bit more stressful than I expected it was going to be. Um, I'm so used to designing on computer where it's very easy to change small proportions very quickly and produce a very accurate drawing. And well, this isn't uh, the most accurate drawing I've ever produced. Um, so what I need to do now is translate this basic design into a layout that works for the large center window, which will have five of these center pieces. So um, I've had to design it, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, with various, various modules that would make sense that work well with two and with uh, five. So I, I, I think it's time to dive in. Of course, I need a larger piece of paper, and I think that can just be achieved with two pieces of paper. Well, I can tell you I'm not at all pleased with what's happened to my drafting abilities, but actually I think this will probably do, and I am very pleased with the proportion and the layout. Okay, time to buckle down and cut some glass. Now, I um, cut, I mean, I bought much more glass than I need. Uh, I bought actually eight square feet and I need something around four. Um, I just figured a little practice glass wouldn't really hurt. Um, so I'm going to cut this two feet piece just in half for now and that'll set me up for the next round. Now the cutter itself um, is a tiny hardened wheel. Uh, that's on a semi-pivoting little end here, uh, as well as it's a bit of a piston. The piston is designed to pump this oil down into the um, cutter head area. So what I'm going to do before I get started is just try a couple of runs until I'm sure I'm getting oil down onto the cutter. and swing it off the edge to break it. I would say that is a very bad first shot. All right then, well in a situation like this, a bit of a walk can always help. So I've gone out and I've procured some bacon and some eggs and not one, but two cork-backed steel rules. I think what happened was, because the rule I was using was not cork-backed and was a bit slippy, I was hesitant to push hard enough to get a good score because I was afraid I was going to deflect the steel rule and, well, I don't think I could have made a worse cut than I actually did. Okay, let's, uh, let's defer this to later and uh, get going with some nice straight cuts. Hopefully. All right then, let's see what we can do here. <laughs> Getting better at this. So far this has been about measuring. Now I'm going to transfer to actually uh, cutting off the template. And this is a bit unnerving for me because this is an all new technique. Um, I, this is another place I wish I'd used CAD because I could have printed two copies of the template and one of them could be set up to be assembling the window and the other could be at a cutting station to be cutting the sections of the window and uh, well hopefully that's that that would be of an advantage but anyway we'll find out soon enough. Cutting inside to account for the web of the cane. 
Thank you. Excellent. Beauty! <laughs> now let's see if this double scoring works as well as I hope it will. Ah, I love it. 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 All right, so if cutting all the glass wasn't stressful enough, the next stage is, well, it's soldering it up, or at least laying it out. So first step to that is to create a little inside corner that you can drive everything against. And again, I'm getting all this from watching a couple of YouTube videos. Um, you know, because YouTube, you know, it's a source of all knowledge today, is it not? Um, happily, this piece of plywood is perfectly square, so this is a pretty straightforward operation. Okay, so now to bring the template back down into my building frame, but I can't put it in as it is because there's way too much edge on it now. So as this uh, double uh, wide H profile is gonna be the outer frame, what I'm gonna do is cut the paper so that it just matches exactly where the outside of the frame will go. Exactly half of that. And start to think about laying in cane. Now, as you can see, when you cut this stuff, it mashes the end over. So I need to make a uh, straighter cut and then open the channel back up uh, for the glass to fit in. Now, every video I've watched has just done butt uh, joints in these corners and then just soldered them up. And I think that's probably just fine. Um, my sensibility uh, encourages me to try and do a, a miter in there, but I don't think there's any reason to. Uh, I'm gonna open up the channel with this trusty little screwdriver. I'm gonna mark it for the next cut. And again, the side cutters or these special lead cutters um, cut quite flat on one side so I'll just line that up and off we go. Now just again to clean up the pinch. And the very first piece of glass. And it seems to be right on the money with my lines. Okay. Okay, first piece of cane to cut. I did see a trick where you place uh, the next piece of glass in and then you place a piece of cane over it and that gives you a guide as to how far how long your next um, piece here is going to be and that slides in there well so far it's not a disaster because the back side of each cut ends up getting mashed you have to freshen up the uh, cane with each new cut so you get a nice fresh end on it and when you're cutting cane you cut this way through the um, uh, through the cane to make sure that you don't actually bend over any sections if you cut this way you'll see what happens it actually mashes it all up so we'll cut again this way and makes a pretty clean cut well what I am seeing is that I left more relief than I need um, which hopefully isn't going to be a problem. Uh, in other words, my pieces of glass are slightly small because in fact, the webbing in the channel is really quite small. It's a 16th of an inch or so, so, and I'm probably leaving too much, but I think it'll all come together just fine. Okay, so I sort of feel a bit of a miter here would only be fair uh, for what's going on here. So it doesn't have to be that accurate, but let me see what I can do. I think that will help a lot with the next piece. And again, actually that feels pretty good right off the bat. I'm feeling I should get started on this top curved piece. Um, largely because I do want to make sure that I'm constantly keeping it uh, held together here and I'll tape this in place now this of course needs to be curved so the easiest way I can think of curving this is basically just <laughs> holding it with my palm 
against and then just flexing a bit of a curve into it and I choose I've already done that easily really quite easily so what I can do now is just set it against the top of the window here and that gives me that curve there we go too easy you know this really isn't going too badly at all I would say that uh, yeah, from a carpenter's point of view, uh, the little miters I was able to do down here are not super tidy, but that's what the solder's for, right? Okay, 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 okay. Nice, 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 nice. Keep it all tight. Now, many of the videos I've watched um, suggest putting in little pins or nails to hold this as you work your way along. Uh, I'm just sort of making sure it's all holding pretty well as I move my way along. Woohoo! As much fun as I'm having, I have to call it quits here for a little while because I have to go do something, but I can't wait to get some solder on here, mostly because I want to see how well it closes up some voids I have on here. Now at this point, definitely uh, screwing in some pins, some screws to keep it together is essential. Now, holy moly, um, I'm a little terrified. I see some places where I wish I'd done a little better, but I have a feeling, although I'm not overly confident, that uh, as I start to solder, I'll be able to sort of straighten some of these out a little bit and, uh, and everything will fall into place in a happy way. <laughs> oh jeepers. Okay, time to solder and uh, in anticipation of soldering, some fluxing. Alright then, well, I'm reasonably pleased with that. Now, a lot of these connections do not have enough solder on them, they're not down in the edge enough, because I wasn't able to find any documentation on the order of operations. I'm going to flip it over now and solder the other side, which is the inside of the window, and so I'd like to finish on the outside of the window again. So, I'm going to flip it over now, solder the other side as well as I think I can, and then come back to this side and touch it up again. Holy mackerel. Whew, it's heavy. <laughs> oh, okay. Hoi. Okay. I'm going to say this side looks reasonably good. Let's go see what the other side looks like now. My goodness, this is heavy. Didn't seem to affect it much, but I'm going to try and fill in a few spots that I don't think are ideal. Well, I can say I am very, very happy with the way that turned out. Uh, it is far from perfect, um, but I think I'll get a little bit better at the next two. And generally, that that is exactly what I was looking for. Of course, this is held in by tape, so I have to uh, cut a rabbit in the door, set it in properly, and get some lighting. Oh, there's so much to do. It's going to be so nice. Okay, here we go again. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus.
absolutely thrilled with the way these have turned out. I, I, I really couldn't have imagined um, I'd be so thrilled with them on my first try. I mean, there are lots of deficits, there's no doubt about it, but it's handmade and handmade is what I really love. Anyway, I'm, I'm just so thrilled. Um, <laughs> these cabinets have now gone from not very useful to completely not useful because now I can't put anything in them. So I think next week we'll be getting some hinges, some latches and some shelves in here so these can really uh, be a little more useful. If this is the sort of thing uh, you enjoy, please consider subscribing to the show. I'd be very grateful. And if you really like this episode, perhaps you could give me a thumbs up or better yet, share it with that friend of yours who would also find it interesting. All right. See you next week. Well, hello and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week, coming to you this week on this wet and wild Victoria afternoon. Well, it's nice to be cozy inside uh, and be poem. Let's get right to the beer. And I'm sticking in theme uh, from the uh, import aisle at my local uh, beer store. And this, I think, would be pronounced Van der Ginst. I'm not quite sure. It's a Belgian sour ale. And sours are not generally my thing, but I want to give everything a good chance. Let's see what this is like. Oh, it's also a very dark ale. Well, relatively dark. What a fantastic and successful week this was. I think I picked a rather large glass for this little bottle. Anyway, um, so pleased with the way those windows turned out. Anyway, I hope you all are too. Cheers. Whoa, that is very sour. That is extremely sour. Uh, very interesting. There's a picture of um, uh, two folks enjoying it on the cover, but their faces are not all puckered up like mine now is. That's very interesting. It doesn't really remind me of a sour, a local sour from the West Coast or, or from Canada in general. It is just a very, very sour beer. Mm. I like it. I like it. I like it enough. Anyway. All right, let's get straight to the paperwork. Last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t-shirt is Steve in Seattle. Well, Steve, congratulations, and uh, get a hold of me. We'll make sure you get your shirt. Cheers. I would like to thank two new patrons that came along in the last little while, and they are Dennis uh, Dorsey and Julia Turney. Thank you ever so much, and cheers to you both, and thanks for coming aboard. I'm very, very grateful. I can get used to that. Also, I'd like to thank um, uh, two new supporters via PayPal, and that's Oliver Chisholm. And uh, I'd like to thank ongoing support to Paul Beglane, who's there for me uh, pretty much every month. Thank you ever so much, Paul, and thanks for coming aboard, Oliver. I'm very, very grateful. Now, um, the couple of weeks ago, I was gifted these. <laughs> They're currently charging to edit this video. Lovely uh, Bluetooth headphones, which have become a big part of my life. And uh, they turned out to be from the very kind uh, repeat offender in the gifting department, uh, Patrick Hotra. Thank you ever so much, Patrick, for your ongoing generosity. I am very, very grateful. And those headphones are awesome. Also, I'd like to thank um, Wally McKinnon, uh, who very kindly uh, sent me uh, some money via the Canadian uh, e-transfer system to help me out uh, to replace the pin nailer which has gone bad and uh, that's really great because <coughs> I seem to be addicted to that thing. Thank you ever so much Wally. Cheers. Mm. Now I have two more people to thank. This is a busy busy week. Um, the first one is Michael Wilcox and Michael is a incredibly talented and incredibly kind individual with a fantastic wooden boat that someday I'd like to be able to show you a picture of and he's the kind fellow that gifted me the fiddle a couple of weeks back but he also is a very fine stained glass leaded glass artisan and it was he that gave me the inspiration to take on this project so thank you ever so much Michael uh, it means a lot to me your support cheers and lastly, I have to send a big shout out to Victorian Art Glass and um, their generosity. Uh, Dennis there was very, very kind when I went in, complete neophyte, uh, to get started in this um, hobby trait thing, whatever it is uh, we could call it. He gave me a ton of his time and some lovely tips. So uh, if you're at all interested in uh, working with glass in this way, they do mail order all over the place. So uh, Victorian Art Glass, fantastic business. Now all we need is a word of the week. And 
I don't know why it's what I chose, but it, it seems to be the underlying feeling I had this week, and I'm afraid it's stressful, or stress. The anxiety I had doing this project was higher than I've had for anything in a long, long time. And it's just that my nature that I just take on this stuff in such a powerful way. Of course, the relief of the stress is also very relieving. Now, I know all of you must have something in your life, I don't know if that's something positive or not, but that you're no longer stressed about. That's the one way to look at it. Anyway, I'm sure you can come up with something. If you'd like to win a Travels Joy t-shirt, all you have to do is use the word stress or stressful or some derivative uh, down in a comment below and I pick it random over the next week's worth of comments and if I pick you, you'll own a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. My gosh, you'd think I could remember how to say that. See you next week, cheers. Let's try that again, shall we?